Hey YouTubers, and welcome back to another Saw discussion video. I feel like with Saw 3D, Saw the Final Chapter, Saw 7, and even the original Saw if you want to take it like that, but mostly the last film, I feel like a lot of people get a lot of things wrong when it comes to Dr. Gordon's involvement with the overarching scope of the series. And by that I mean a lot of people basically interpret his character or his motivations or anything like that as someone who is in a, di a direct apprentice to someone like Jigsaw, and I don't necessarily think of it that way. I never really have. And I understand if you watch the film and you don't necessarily think about it too heavily, that can basically seem like the case. It seems like someone is helping him. You know, he's doing the eye surgery in Saw 2 and in Saw 4. He's also showing John Lynn Denlin uh, for the Saw 3 trap. He was heavily involved with a lot of this stuff. How is he not an apprentice? But we have to basically go into the, what the original ending was. So if you guys remember, Hoffman is basically blowing up his hideout after he basically stabbed and slashed his way through the entire city's police department. And he's gang rushed by three people in masks. And a lot of people have interpreted that. And it supposedly is true considering what we heard a long time ago back when this was a little bit more relevant that those two people helping Dr. Gordon were Brad and Ryan from the original trap at the very beginning of the movie at the public scene where they were basically having to push the saws back and forth or in the middle. And one of the things that that was supposed to kind of lead to at least in the original script of the film was Hoffman would be left in the bathroom and then you would have this kind of quick shots of everyone in the Bobby Dagen survivor group basically saying, he helped me, he helped me, he helped me, basically to indicate that these people aren't apprentices, but they've learned their lessons through all of these situations, and they are actually now disciples of John or Jigsaw or whatever you want to call it. And that is what Dr. Gordon was supposed to be. And I know it's weird to sit there and think, well, what's the difference between a disciple and an apprentice? Well, when you kind of interpret it the way that John does, a disciple is more of someone who is faithful to the concept, to the teachings and all this other stuff and will help, but they won't continue the legacy. If we go all the way back to Saul 2 with Amanda telling Eric Matthews that she is the one who is going to take over after John dies. She is the apprentice. She is the only apprentice. And you might sit there and go, well, what was Hoffman? Well, Hoffman was more of like, I guess, a helping hand, something they told us in Saul 4, you know, we're, help we're here to find the person helping Jigsaw and Amanda Young. And even in Saul 6, we sit sit sits and goes, John is dead, I'm in charge of the games now, but there was no indication of whether or not he had any idea or even knew what to do when it came to planning traps, planning for people. I mean, even Bobby Dagen was someone that John had targeted at some point. In Saul 6's flashback where Hoffman and Amanda and John are talking and he's sitting there going, how many next times is there going to be is like as many as there needs to be and one of the things we never really saw Hoffman do something that Amanda probably would have done as an apprentice but we never really got there is we never saw Hoffman basically create a game choose anybody or or throw anyone under the bus other than Seth Baxter who as we all know he was the guy who killed uh, Hoffman's sister and he put him in the trap and that's how John found him and everything like that so there's very little indication that anyone was actually chosen or put in a trap specifically to do that when Amanda seemingly had that ability or that goal with Troy and uh, Detective Carrie and all this other stuff in Saul 3, uh, especially Troy, that's one thing that kind of left us in. It was like she interpreted that game, she picked that game, she, uh, she kidnapped him and all this other stuff. She had that ability, she had that freedom when it came to John's philosophy. No one else did, at least not the way that we saw it or we, we as an audience were supposed to interpret that. So why is it that Dr. Gordon was kind of introduced in Saul 3D and shown to be this kind of accomplished person who was tracking and basically making sure that Hoffman didn't kill Jill or Hoffman didn't get too aggressive or overblown or any of that type of stuff? And why is that not an apprentice? Well, I never really interpreted Dr. Gordon, although a lot of people in the fan base do, kind of as someone who was going to continue the Jigsaw legacy. He wasn't going to go and do more games. I always kind of thought of it as, you know, as Jill basically uh, dropping off the VHS tape for him to listen to and he plays it and John goes, you know, you are perhaps my greatest asset. You know, you're the person who learned from all of this. Uh, in fact, he's the only person at the very end of the movies who actually survived a trap, went through a traumatic experience, and is still a better person for it. Even Amanda kind of went down the deep end. Hoffman went down the deep end 
you know, amazingly. Uh, Jill never survived her trap that Hoffman put her in because she didn't really have a chance. He cheated. So why does that matter? I really feel like you are my greatest asset kind of is if Hoffman goes overboard, if Hoffman basically kills Jill, I need you to take action and this is what I want you to do. With that being said, he was brought in to stop Hoffman in my opinion because Hoffman at this point had bastardized everything that he stood for, uh, the, the philosophy of Jigsaw because as we saw in Salt 7, he was basically a slasher villain, a slasher. He was Jason or Freddy or Michael Myers or something like that. Completely scarred, uh, you know, kind of a deformed face, walking around stabbing people to death. It was the movie's way of showing us that this is no longer a Saul film. In Saul 7, Hoffman's demeanor and Hoffman's bloodthirsty attitude where there's no real rhyme or reason to any particular game and so many people are being tested and it's just kind of a hamstrung set pieces together for him to get the upper hand and basically stab everyone is basically just yelling at us the audience that this is not a Saul film this is not what any of the Saul films were supposed to be it's kind of the anti-Saul film to the point where if we continue down this path if we allow Hoffman to continue rampaging for this film and maybe the next film and the next film and the next film and not replace him if not kind of take him out put him in that bathroom lock him away for good this franchise will basically spiral into the depths of not quality like you know the 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 anti-quality that becomes of Friday of the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street or the Halloween franchise and we need to stop that and the perfect person to stop that is someone who completely understands and believes in the whole philosophy of what the original Saul films were supposed to become anyway and no better person or physical embodiment in terms of character than Dr. Gordon himself the person who originally survived the trap at the very end of the first film so that's the way I've always interpreted it. I know everyone has their opinions on whether or not I'm right or not, and you're completely allowed to understand that this guy is, in fact, an accomplice or even um, even an apprentice to Jigsaw or John Kramer, and that he is actually heavily involved in everything going on. But, I mean, the only thing I would say is, if that were true, if he was an accomplice, if he was an apprentice, and he wasn't just a, a follower, someone who believed in the philosophy and helped whenever he was allowed to an asset then why is it the he was the one writing Hoffman these letters of I know who you are and Hoffman didn't immediately understand what was going on or why is that Hoffman said to Jill that John was dead and he's the only one who can continue with the games when he knows that this other accomplice who's been kind of sitting in the background for the long time uh, is still out there and might want to like headbutt him and all this other stuff in terms of this isn't the way it's supposed to be or this is how we should basically go about the games if this guy wasn't just someone who came in and helped every now and then and this guy survived a trap so maybe you know he could be trusted he understands what we're doing wink wink uh and even when Dr. Gordon basically shows up and takes out Hoffman, he's even kind of out of it. He's like, I didn't even know that this was possible, that you would take matters into your own hands because you've never done it before. No one ever thought that you would, so it is genuinely shocking to someone like me. And that is why I don't necessarily think that he was an apprentice. I know a lot of people might disagree, but I really want to hear everyone's thoughts and opinions in the comment section below because I'm. this could be an interesting debate, honestly. I think that this could be a huge interest interesting debate. So with that being said, guys, I want everyone to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope everyone has a good day. I hope everyone has enjoyed the video. I hope everyone has thoughts and opinions that they've been sharing in the comment section below as I've been talking. And honestly, guys, I hope everyone just has a really awesome day. Thanks. Bye.